Good afternoon. Welcome to a Thursday Youth Devotion. Uh, today we're going to be in the book of James. So I'll go ahead and start with some scripture and then we'll jump into it. This is uh, James 2, 14 through 26. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed or lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for their body. What good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar. You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith Faith apart from works is dead. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So a little over 150 years ago, he was one of the most famous people in all the world, but you've likely not heard of him. His name is C.H. Spurgeon, and he earned the nickname at a young age of 22 as being the Prince of Preachers. And this is because of his Christ-centered and Christ-inspired sermons and as pastor of London's Uh, downtown church, New Park Street Chapel. Every every Sunday, he would preach twice to congregations up to 6,000 people before the days of microphones or amplification or sound systems. Today, he still has more books in print than any pastor in history, including more than 2,500 sermons. Spurgeon lived in a very simple conviction, to beeline everything in his life and ministry to Jesus. Of course, beeline is a funny word, that we don't use very often today. It means that no matter what he was preaching or teaching about, Spurgeon was always headed to Jesus. Once a young pastor asked Spurgeon to critique his preaching, and the older man was blunt. That was a poor sermon, is what he said. When the young man asked for an explanation, Spurgeon replied, because there was no Christ in it. The young man protested that his chosen scripture verse had nothing to do with Jesus. And Spurgeon responded in this way. Don't you know, young man? that from every town and every village and every hamlet in England, wherever it may be, there is a road that leads to London. And so from every text in scripture, there's a road to the metropolis of the scriptures. That is Christ. Spurgeon's passion for Jesus and his determination to track everything he said and did back to Christ, who is the light we need to find our way through a life that can seem very dark. Another way to define beeline might be pointing directly towards something or straight arrow. Sermons are awesome. And they're Christ-centered. And they're centered on scripture. And Spurgeon was known for being, pretty, for being pretty good at them. But here's something worth thinking about. The way you live your life may be, may be the most important sermon your friends will ever hear. If that's true, and if the best sermons make a beeline or point directly towards Jesus, then maybe our lives can make a beeline or point directly towards Jesus too. But as you know, a lot of teenagers are pointing lives to all sorts of things outside of Christ. For many, how they pick their friends points towards a desire to be popular. How they talk to each other puts up people down. How they spend their time alone points away from Jesus and towards temptations. The way you live your life may and will be the most important sermon your friends will ever hear. So the question today is, what is your sermon pointing to? Thank you guys for joining me, and we'll see you again tomorrow for another devotion. God bless.